Hi, my name is Erica Morrison, and I'm representing the London International Students. Um, you can learn more about us at www.londoninternationalstudents.com. And today I'm going to do a video on how to prepare for and enjoy winter in Canada. Yes, it is possible, even if you come from a very hot country, which many uh, international students do, or a country that doesn't get very cold in the winter time. Um, you probably heard horror stories of what it can be like over here. Um, but I, I'm telling you that although there can be some difficulties, you can enjoy winter. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what kind of warm clothes you want to get, both outerwear, such as coats, and um, other clothes underneath your coat, other tips for warmth, how you can be safe in very cold or icy conditions when walking or driving, and also taking care of your physical and emotional health so that you can actually enjoy the winter months. So we're first going to talk about outerwear, what to wear on your outside of your body um, when you go outside. And here are a group of international students and it looks to me like they're well dressed for winter. So I'm going to be showing you a few things that I have here while I'm talking. And the first thing that you want to make sure you have for winter in Canada is a good winter coat. So we recommend that you buy something that is quality. That doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be very expensive, but it should be a very good coat that is going to keep you warm and comfortable. It needs to be waterproof on the outside and on the tag, it should say if it is waterproof or not. Uh, snow can melt easily. Maybe there's ice rain. There's many reasons why your coat could get wet. And if you're wet and cold, that'll make you even colder. Um, so you want something that's waterproof and then a good material on the inside to keep you warm. Um, a great material is called down. It's um, some very soft feathers, but that can definitely be more expensive. But there are a lot of synthetic materials, too, that can be um, can, that can be very warm. Um, we're going to link to a lot of different websites below this video that you can look into for more information. I'm not a total expert on winter and I had to do some research myself and then we'll also have those links so you can do further research. Also, um, definitely feel free to ask the person selling the clothing their opinion about warmth and things like that. So a good winter coat should have a hood. A hood is like a hat that is attached to the coat. Um, and that makes sure that you'll be very warm. Even if you wear a winter hat, you can put the hood over top. Um, it's great if it has pockets so that you can keep different things that you need in there and easily reach them. And then I definitely love to have a coat that reaches down to my um, mid thigh. So you can't really see here, but it goes pretty far down my leg. I used to always wear coats that came up to my waist uh, and I thought that was just, you know, the best thing that I could have. But when I got a coat 10 years ago that came down to my mid thigh, I felt way warmer, particularly when you sit in a car that has a cold seat or at the bus stop, you don't have to sit with your, um, you know, only your pants and you definitely feel the cold through that. But even just walking outside, I feel like the wind is not getting into my coat. It's much better. Um, it seems like that is more offered for women, unfortunately, but there are guys coats that also can be longer. So if you can do that, that'll probably keep you warmer. And then winter boots are your second thing that you definitely need. So here are my winter boots. And again, waterproof is really important. So try to get it at waterproof as far up to the top as you can. Ask the person you're buying it from if they think it's waterproof and maybe it'll stay on the label as well. Um, again, this will keep your socks from getting wet. When you have wet socks, it's, you'll get feel much colder. And then there should be um, quite a bit of lining on the inside to add extra warmth. And then it's nice if it's quite tight to your foot um, to keep the snow from falling inside. And this one has a zipper so that you can just zip your, your foot and leg right in there. 
Um, yeah, and then good traction is really important. Um, being able, it should have many ridges on the top to be able to walk more um, easily on the ice. These actually don't look like they have the best traction. Maybe my next boots, I'll get better traction. But so far they've been serving me well. And as you can see from the stars in the corner here, um, I recommend investing in quality so you'll be warm, comfortable, and safe. Okay, so the next thing that you probably wanna get is a winter hat. Where did I put my winter hat? Here it is. This kind of winter hat is called a toque. It's just very simple. Uh, you put it on your head like this. It should cover your ears. Ears can get so cold in the winter and then it covers your entire head. So um, a toque like this is really recommended or another kind of hat that covers your ears. Um, so gloves and mittens. Mittens are like this, and they do not have um, extra places for your fingers to have individual, you know, uh, cloth over their fingers. Your fingers are together and they keep you warmer. <clears throat> With gloves, your fingers are apart. So this is easier for picking things up and doing things like that, but these get colder. The air goes through. Um, through your fingers and you can feel much colder with them. So I would recommend getting a few pairs of these, a few pairs of these, and then putting your mittens or your gloves inside your mittens. And then you've got both, you've got the warmth. And if you need to pick something up, then you can just quickly take your hand out and it's not a bare hand that'll get really cold in, in cold weather. They also are offering more often now um, gloves that you can use with your phone and still have it work with the glove on. I don't think this one works like that, but you can look that look for that um, on the label or on a, the um, sign outside of the glove to see if it will work with your phone. My husband has kind of an interesting glove. And I think you can find these more and more too. So you can get these in any color. But when you open up, you can open up the top of the glove and then your fingers are sticking out. Um, and this is still a gloved hand. I'm sorry, this is a mitten. So it kind of covers your hand like a mitten. And then you can take this off and it's more like a glove if you need to pick something up. You could maybe even use this one with your phone. So I think you got these at Canadian Tire. And then a scarf. I actually don't wear my scarf very much because my coat um, zips way up to my chin. It's got a warm part over here. It's generally is to keep your neck warm. Um, but especially if it's very cold weather, you can also cover your mouth, um, which you probably want, and nose, which you might want to do if it gets really, really cold. So a scarf is a good thing to have, and it looks nice too. And then um, snow pants. These are not necessarily, um, they're not necessarily needed, especially if you just go out a little bit. But if you're gonna do a winter sport, snow pants can be a great thing to have. Um, these are my little son's snow pants. They're really thick um, inside and they'll just keep him from getting wet and cold on his legs. And then they have straps that go under the coat. And you can find snow pants for yourself as well. I don't have snow pants at the moment. I just have something called wind pants. They're similar, but they're not as thick on the inside. Uh, I might get some snow pants someday, but these do keep me warmer than snow pants, or sorry, than just ordinary pants um, without anything over top. And why do you want those pockets in your coat? Well, then you can keep things like tissues and um, chapstick in your pocket. These are two things that you don't wanna go without. It's easy for your nose to start dripping in the cold. It's easier to catch colds in the winter. So it's good to have your Kleenex on hand, your tissues. And then also you'll more easily get dry lips in the winter. So it's good to have this 
um, just to quickly get your lips moist. I'll talk more about that later. You might want to take a pair of shoes in your bag. Um, snow boots can get covered in snow on the outside and then you'll be tracking the snow inside whatever building you're going into. Uh, some people just stamp, I think most people stamp out their boots on a rug, hopefully get most of the snow off. Um, but if you don't want to wear your heavy boots indoors, you could have a pair of shoes inside your bag. And another thing that's available to give you much better traction for your boots is something called a crampon. Um, you can get that at Canadian Tire or some, some store like that. And you just put them on the outside of your, on the, on the bottom of your boot, they kind of hook on and they're not usually very expensive and they can um, be taken off and on <clears throat> when you go indoors to take them off and they can give you more traction on the ice. Other options that you might want, some people wear earmuffs, you know, they just cover your ears or a headband that goes around your head. It covers your ears. Uh, so it'll keep your ears warm, which is the most important maybe, but it, heat goes out of your head, leaves your head very easily. And so if it's a very cold day, um, definitely your toque or a hat that covers your whole head um, will keep you much warmer. <clears throat> and then if it's very, very cold, <laughs> let's say negative 20, something like that, um, a balaclava, where is the balaclava that I had? There it is. I don't actually want wear, I don't own one of these, but it, um, it covers everything except for your little bit of your face. This is, this belongs to my son and it's good for outdoor sports, outdoor work, where you're going to be outside for an extended period of time, a balaclava. Yeah. And so that's a lot of the um, outerwear that you might want to have, especially the coat and boots, winter hat, and, and uh, gloves and mittens, I would say, are the most important. So winter clothes for underneath all those um, outer clothes, you want to be able to layer them. And that means lay them on top of each other um, because you want to be able to just take something off if you are warm, because it could be very cold outdoors, but indoors people could have the heat turned way up and you'll just be sweating if you have, if you only have a sweater on and you can't take it off. So that's why you should have something underneath. So this is an example of layering. On the outside, you might have a sweater or a sweatshirt and hoodie. Let's see, here's my, here's my hoodie. So hoodie has a hood, just like a coat. And then you can just leave it like this, zip it up. It'll keep you really warm. And then if you're extra cold, you can put the hood on. And then even if you're outside, maybe you forgot your hat or you even want to put it on underneath your hat, it'll keep you extra warm. So a few hoodies are great to have for winter time. They are more casual though. And a sweater is a little more formal. So here's um, an example of a sweater. It's not a super warm one, but it's something. And then underneath that, you can have either a long sleeve or short sleeve shirt. So here I have a short sleeve shirt. I'm always surprised in the winter because I'll buy long sleeve shirts and then I rarely wear them because people's homes are and, and schools and things are heated so high that I get so hot, I need a short sleeve shirt but you probably want long sleeve shirts too, just in case a place you go really is quite cool. And then a thermal base layer is underneath your t-shirt. And I'll show you an example of what I would put on my son. So it's just a little, um, we call it an undershirt. And that can keep you extra warm underneath your t-shirt, especially if you're going out to be outside for a while, like my kids would do and play. Um, or if it's an especially cold day. And then of course you want your warm socks on. Some people recommend wool and maybe there's some good wool socks out there. I tend to find it kind of itchy, but maybe there are good ones that are not, but these are just some um, ordinary cotton, but thick socks. And then if you're going out for a long time, maybe for a hike, or playing a sport, maybe you want to wear these double, so two on each foot. 
And then always try to take an extra pair of socks in your bag, just in case some of your other socks that you're wearing get wet. Again, if you're wet and cold, that can really cause your feet to feel extra cold and maybe put you at risk for um, frostbite. So it's good to have an extra pair. When and where do you buy good outerwear, coats and boots? So I had to look this up. And interestingly enough, uh, Thanksgiving weekend can be a time when there are a lot of sales on coats and boots and things like that. And Black Friday weekend, which is more of an American holiday, but Canada has been following it lately. Um, it's in November and this year, 2021, it'll be November 26th. It's just one day. And there are often lots of sales. And then if for some reason you need to replace something later on, or you still haven't bought something for some reason, February is an excellent time to get Christmas or to get winter things uh, because the stores are starting to get rid of their winter things to make room for spring things. Even though spring is not exactly around the corner in February. So where can you get um, good clothes? It depends on your price range. So if you're really trying to save money, and actually I love to save money, and so I love to go to thrift stores or secondhand stores. They're a place where people have already worn the clothing, maybe they got too small for them, or they just don't like them anymore. They'll bring them to those stores, they'll wash them for you. And um, in the fall and winter, there should be a lot of <clears throat> winter clothes. Here are some examples of secondhand stores, Talese, Mission Thrift Store, Goodwill, and Value Village. So those are all Ontario thrift stores. And you might be surprised at the great quality of things you can find for such a small price. Then Walmart is um, usually not too pricey, although the quality, it kind of depends. So you might have to um, do your research. Winners or Marshalls often have really good quality things and they are at discounted prices uh, than what they would originally be. So that can be a good place to find things. And then Marks and Canadian Tire, you'll find great quality for outdoor things, um, coats and, and boots and other things. Um, they can be even more expensive. And sports stores will always be a great place to find quality, quality coats. Um, such as sport check. So I just wrote down here a few of um, good, good brands, brands that we know that are usually really good for boots and coats, but there could be, there's probably many others. So if you don't have these brands, don't worry about it. North Face is excellent. Columbia, Under Armour, Arcturix, Dickies, Eddie Bauer, Point zero, Helly Hansen for coats, for boots, Sorrel, Eddie Bauer, Polar, North Face, Point Zero. Uh, I think they call it UG. Um, yeah, but again, there can be many other kinds that are good. You just want to find good materials and um, yeah, they're going to keep you warm. So Canada Goose is an excellent brand, but it's so over, it's so pricey a thousand or more and I don't think you're paying for much much better clothing um, when it comes to warmth all right other tips about winter if the weather is very cold so negative 15 or lower make sure to cover as much of your skin as possible and try not to be out too long uh, particularly, I read if it's negative 27 degrees Celsius or lower, you could get frostbite within half an hour. <clears throat> now, I don't know too many people who've gotten frostbite. I've never gotten it myself, even though I've spent tons of time outdoor in the winter. But it just means that your, your layers of skin are literally freezing and it could require medical attention if it's bad enough. Now, frost nip, on the other hand, is very common. Uh, it's something that you'll get a lot this winter. It, your fingers will just start tingling, your toes will tingle, maybe your ears and nose. This is normal when it gets cold. Um, it's not dangerous, although if it was for a very extended time, hours and hours, I don't know, it could maybe turn into frostbite. So take it as a warning if you're feeling that to, to get inside sometime as soon as you can. <clears throat> um, 
uh, an international student gave this advice. So he said he was so tempted to turn his heat up to 30 degrees so that he would feel like he did in his home country. And so he did, <laughs> but when it's so hot indoors and then so cold outdoors, it's really difficult for your body to adjust. So it's better to, yes, you can turn up your heat, but turn it up to something like 21 or, or 23, where it's comfortable, maybe still a little bit cool. Um, and that way your body has an easier time adjusting to going outside. Um, here are some ideas instead. Wear a sweater indoors, slippers or warm socks, or have a blanket over you. And here's an example of some slippers. And these are actually slipper socks. So they're just something that I can put on in the morning with bare feet, or if it's especially cold indoors, and then feel like my feet, um, feet are comfortable. In the winter, it is common for some people to get a bloody nose. Actually, I, I do. It just suddenly happens. And this is because of the dry winter air that can dry out your inner nose. Um, <clears throat> winter air doesn't hold moisture as well. And then also we have the blowing heat on us, maybe in the car or in, in your home. And that just makes the air so much drier. So something you could do is buy a humidifier. This just, it's a machine that adds moisture into the, into the air, or just simply put a warm bowl of water near your bed so that you're getting that warm air while you're sleeping, moistening, moistening your um, nose and, and skin. And that should help maybe even prevent um, getting a bloody nose. And then as I mentioned before, chapstick and also um, <clears throat> moisturizer. So hand or body lotion is great to have around. You probably wanna buy a few of these to have in different places. So you can just make sure that your lips and your skin um, don't get too dry because then they could, they could hurt after some time. So here's another tip that an international student said, and I can verify this is true. So if you get frost nip, you're just, um, your fingers or toes, they feel like they're buzzing, even burning. It can hurt a little bit after you come in from a very cold day. Um, <clears throat> you can simply let them just warm up gradually, but you probably want to try to warm them up quickly because it's so uncomfortable. Uh, so you could sit by a heating vent, put your fingers by there, um, or put it under them under cool or warm water. And you might be tempted to put them under hot water, but just don't do it because you can't really feel the heat while your fingers are so tingly and your toes and other things. Um, and you could burn yourself not even knowing it quite badly because you can't feel the warm water yet. So just do a gradual, um, gradual heating up. Okay, so in the winter, it, there can often be icy conditions. And sometimes we call certain ice black ice. And that's if you can see right through the ice to maybe the black asphalt underneath or whatever colors underneath, it doesn't have to be black. But it means you just can't see the ice. It looks like you're just seeing the road or the sidewalk. And that can be especially dangerous because you don't realize that it's there. Um, but any ice at all, even if you see it, it can be it can be dangerous and slippery and falls can be unfortunately common. But here's some tips to prevent falls as much as possible. So buy boots with good traction, like I said before, buy some crampons to put on your boots if you have to walk a lot to the bus or that kind of thing. Um, Maybe, maybe for some reason you own a house, um, then you need to buy some ice melt salt. It's salt that comes in big pellets. I read that it's similar to table salt, but you never know what you add into what they add into it. So I would never eat it. Um, <clears throat> but you just sprinkle it all over your porch stairs, the sidewalk near your home, uh, the driveway, and it starts to melt the ice. And it also provides some friction, some traction for when you're walking. And hopefully your landlord and other people will regularly do that right away in the morning, sprinkle that salt. <clears throat> and so when you're walking on other people's property, try to walk where you see that others have sprinkled the salt. You can probably see it on the ground. 
Um, try to walk slowly. Give yourself more time to get places. If you know you have to be at the bus and usually in the summer, it takes 10 minutes. Now, maybe give yourself something like 20 minutes so that you can go extra, extra slowly if you need to. And I just heard this tip to walk like a penguin. I'd never heard that before. And I'm going to try it this year, but we're going to link to a video below this or yeah, link to a video below this video um, so that you can see how walking like a penguin could help you maintain your balance. Um, always look where you're going. Maybe you can hold on to something like a tree branch or something if you're trying to go over a, a particularly uh, slippery place or try walking in the snow beside the sidewalk. Sometimes people have walked so much on a certain icy area and it's refrozen, but there's still snow on the side, then walk on the snow instead. Usually it's not as slippery. Okay, so when driving, hopefully you have your Service Ontario um, driving handbook. So here's an example of one. If you don't have one, um, you can go to the Service Ontario centers they have a green sign in the front uh, and they can have one for you they're not too expensive maybe i think it was 15 dollars and it has more details about driving in the winter so you definitely should read that if you're driving uh, give yourself a lot more time again to get somewhere if it usually takes 15 minutes to drive maybe give yourself you know 20 minutes to half an hour um, because you never know uh, how slow you're going to have to drive and you don't want to be in a hurry. Make sure to slow down when there's poor visibility. So sometimes in a snowstorm, you just can't see very well. So you, you should not be driving the same speed that you normally drive when you, when you can see well. And then, um, yeah, if it's icy or there might be ice, again, slow down. It'll make it easier to stop if you need to, if, it's, if you start to slide or something like that. Slow down earlier for yellow and red lights so you don't have to slam on the brakes. Um, in the summer, you know, it, it suddenly you notice, oh, it turned red. You can quickly touch the brake, you're probably okay. But in the winter, it's possible if you slam on the brakes that your wheels will start skidding and you'll skid, you'll slide um, a little bit. And that can be a little bit scary. <laughs> um, so it's better that if you see the lights coming up and you're not sure yet when it's going to be yellow or, or, or red, just slow down a little bit. Start slowing down so you'll be ready to slow down once it is yellow or red or you'll be ready to stop. This is an excellent tip, and unfortunately, it's also an expensive one, but buy winter tires and get them replaced, get them put on in October, and then usually taken off around April when all snow is hopefully gone, uh, and you will have much better traction on the ice. I used to not have winter tires. I wanted to save money, but once I followed my uncle's advice and got them, it was much better driving. Um, I rarely skid at all. Not perfect, it is still possible to skid, but much better. Yeah, and if the weather is very bad, weather forecasters may recommend not driving at all if you can. So sometimes you just might have to stay home because it's just not good for driving. So why are we talking about emotional health during, um, during the winter? because snow can be so beautiful and a lot of fun. There's a lot of great things about winter that'll fill you with joy and happiness, but there also is less sunlight in the winter. Um, the sun comes up, I think a little bit later and it goes down definitely a lot earlier. And some people suffer from something called SAD or seasonal affective disorder. And actually most people can feel a little bit down during the winter after a period of time. It's a type of depression related to the seasons um, because of reduced sunlight in the winter. I guess sunlight can help uh, with serotonin and other chemicals in your body that help you feel more happy. Also, because it is cold, people usually stay indoors more. So they're given, getting even less sunlight. They're not socializing as more. They're feeling down because it's cold and uncomfortable and maybe gray outside. So there's so many reasons why you might be more likely to feel down in the winter than you would in the summer. 
And by the way, I just want to say that I am not a health professional, neither emotional health or physical health professional. So please, if you are really suffering, um, reach out to a professional. Don't have any shame in that. Um, they're there to help you. But it's important to take care of your body, which will help both your physical health and your emotional health. So here's some ideas. Try to get some fresh air and sunlight every day, even if it's very cold. And I have to admit, I struggle with this so much. I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like getting all on all my stuff and getting out there in the, in the horrible cold weather. Um, but it can usually make you feel better after you've gone for a bit. So maybe you want to go for a daily walk or try something new like sledding. There are something called crazy carpets that are not very expensive. You can get them at Walmart, go down a hill. It's actually really fun. Maybe you can gather a group of people to do that. Um, maybe create a routine to get some exercise every day, like an online exercise class. Even if you uh, can't get outside, you can do that. Um, or go swimming at the YMCA. Maybe you can join a gym. And those endorphins, when you're exercising, will help you to feel happier and it'll make you actually healthier. You might want to sit in the sun by the window to give yourself more sunlight and just uh, fill you with hopefully some joy from that. Have plants indoors. Um, I would suggest having whole food vitamins. They're definitely more expensive than synthetic vitamins, but I read that they, your body absorbs those vitamins way better. Uh, it's like night and day, so it will make a big difference for your physical health. You can find those at health food stores. But if you can't afford multivitamins, maybe especially vitamin D and C, <clears throat> and again, I'm not a health professional, but um, you might want to research that further and ask others who are professionals. Try to eat a well-balanced diet, especially not too much sugar. Sugar lowers your immune system, making it more easily for you to get colds. And already the cold weather already lowers your immune system as well. So that's why so many people get colds and flus in the winter, along with the fact that we often gather together indoors more, not during the pandemic, but normally. And so it makes it easier to get uh, colds and flu. So try and stay away from the sugar as much as you can. And there's something called light therapy. There's special light boxes that mimic real sunlight. And, and some people say that really helps with seasonal affective disorder. Um, we link to it below this video. Some more ways to take care of your emotional health. Um, so you have your study and work routine and you're probably super busy. And if you're studying, maybe even work is always on the computer, you really need some variety in your life. Um, so think of ways to add variety, rest and fun to your routine to fill you with some joy. And maybe write down your ideas and put them up on the wall where you're gonna notice them. And sometime when you feel like bored or down, you just look at your list and hopefully pick something and try it out. It's really important to take breaks from studying in the computer um, and, and not to just go watch a whole bunch of YouTube, YouTube videos um, because screens, more and more screens probably won't help you feel better. Um, but going outside, exercising, going to a coffee shop where it can at least see people interact with them or library, other ways to socialize, that can be more of a variety that you need emotionally. You could think of some things you'd like to enjoy regularly. Maybe sit by the window under a blanket with a book, go for a walk with a friend, uh, try an indoor outdoor sport on the weekend. I know not all of these are easy to figure out, but um, if, with some research, maybe you can uh, find some things that you would enjoy. And it's also very hard during the pandemic to make friends, I hear, um, because you're just always indoors and on the computer. Um, but maybe you have a class, classmate that you think you would like to study with. Maybe you can send them a text and ask them um, or invite someone out for coffee or a walk in the park. Sometimes when we're feeling really lonely or isolated, we wonder why isn't anybody reaching out to me? What, where are my friends? Um, where are people for me to hang out with? And if you feel that way, probably other people are feeling that way too, wondering where are people? Why aren't they reaching out to me? And so 
it's really good if you can think about being that person that reaches out to others. And you'll probably find over time that others will start reaching out to you as well. Um, so for example, try maybe even every day, think of just a small thing you can do to encourage another person and then do it. Because when we try to make others happy, it often increases our own happiness. So for example, send an encouraging message to a classmate. Maybe you could say, oh, you had a really good answer in class today. That really, um, I really enjoyed learning about that. Maybe you can grab something to send in the mail to your friends or family member in your home country. Maybe you um, grab a snack and you buy two and then leave one at somebody's door, um, a friend or, or give them some flowers. And even a simple smile at an elderly person on the street uh, can really encourage them. So not everything has to cost money, just a smile and a word um, can really um, bless other people and hopefully encourage you as well. This is a fun idea, maybe create a contest with a few other people, like say, okay, um, today the snow is great for packing, it's really wet snow, um, let's see who can make the best snowman, and then each of you go out there, take a picture of your snowman, post it, and then vote who, whose is the best, or the most beautiful winter picture, you guys can go out, and so making a snowman, it doesn't have to take a long time, could take 10 minutes out of your studying day, but give you joy and physical activity and sunlight. And maybe you'll make a few friends in the process. So the things I mentioned, um, not all of them are easy. Uh, and if you are struggling, please don't hesitate to reach out. There are counselors at Fanshawe and Western who are very happy to help you and we'll link to that below this video as well. Um, that's their job. They want to help your emotional health. So please reach out to them. Don't suffer alone. Um, and then we at Inter London International Students, we would love to be a friend and encouragement to you too. So just contact us through this website, LondonInternationalStudents.com. Maybe we could go for a walk with you or chat with you, go out for coffee. Honestly, it would be our honor. We would love to meet you. Or maybe you have some ideas on how to get a group of people together, maybe a group of international students to do something fun. Um, and so you can go to our website and send us an email. Hey, I have this idea. Maybe we can make it happen for you because you're so busy. Maybe we can find the time to make it happen. And if you haven't already, uh, go to this website above and you can find where um, under one of the tabs, how to join our Facebook group. And from there, um, you can find out how to receive texts from us that announce events. So at least once a month, we try to do some kind of live event um, as long as the pandemic rules allow and safety allows. And so for example, we might go for a hike together. Um, we might go maybe tubing. So that's a tube that goes down a hill, but for sure we'll probably go sledding. So we'll bring a whole bunch of sleds. You can go down a hill. It'll be so much fun. And so hopefully you can join us for a few of those things. And if you would like to receive texts that announce those events and you can sign up from the text, um, yeah, please go to our website and join our Facebook group and then you can find out how. So my challenge to you is to try to see winter as an adventure. I know that you probably have a bit of dread. Is it gonna be really cold, icy, unpleasant? Maybe if you're driving, you're not excited about that. Um, but especially if winter's new for you, try to see it as an adventure. Make a list of things that bring you joy and also things that you would like to try. So maybe there's some winter sports and activities that you would like to try. And I'm not gonna go over all of them here, but you could type in um, on Google, London, Ontario snowshoeing. Maybe you can find a place where you can buy or rent them for a good price. I got my snowshoes, I think at Play It Again Sports, which is a, a discounted sports store, not that far from Fanshawe. Get outside um, to take photos of winter scenes, maybe try some Canadian foods that you can find in the grocery store. Uh, chili is a special, especially popular one. It can be either vegetarian or meat. And um, it's, yeah, it makes you warm, it's delicious, or just cook your own home country favorites. 
try special winter drinks. Uh, hot chocolate and apple cider are especially um, winter drinks in Canada. Maybe you're bored, take the bus and look at Christmas lights um, when it's in the evening, especially in November and December. A lot of people put Christmas lights on their homes and stores. It can be very beautiful. And Victoria Park in downtown London also puts up um, lots of lights around in the trees. It looks very nice. Maybe you can plan for Christmas on December 25 and buy or make Christmas cards or gifts. Maybe you like to do crafts um, for a few of your friends so that you can give them something and, and feel joy in that. So I just wanted to add something here that often comforts me when I'm getting nervous about something, particularly about something I need to get. Um, so there's a verse that um, Jesus said, actually, he said, why do you worry about clothes? Look at the wildflowers in the field. See how they grow. They don't work or make clothes for themselves. But I tell you that even Solomon, the great and rich king, was not dressed as beautifully as these flowers. If God makes what grows in the field so beautiful, wh why do you think he will do for you? Or sorry, what do you think he'll do for you? It's just grass. One day it's alive, the next day someone throws it in a fire, but God cares enough to make it beautiful. Surely he will do more for you. And so I think that's um, when it comes to clothes, it's not just beauty, but warmth and everything we need. I, I myself um, am a person of faith and I believe that God wants to provide, provide me with things that will keep me warm and look good. And um, actually, I was just going over this verse with a friend maybe a month ago, and she needed to get a winter coat. And she really wanted to save money on it. So she checked a few times in the thrift stores, um, and it, she wasn't able to find something yet. But then we were reading this verse, and she said, I'm just going to trust God that he's going to provide this for me. And the next time she went, there was this beautiful winter coat. Um, it was North Face. $60 when normally it would be at least at least 200 uh, long. It was the perfect coat. <laughs> so um, I just want to encourage you that even if you're nervous about winter, try to trust that God can provide for you and make sure you'll be okay. Okay, so I'm not going to go over all of these, but here's some more ideas. You can stop the video if you want to read them on how to enjoy winter. And finally, if you have any other ideas or advice about preparing and enjoying winter in Canada or any questions, um, post your thoughts below this video. And again, please feel free to contact us anytime at londoninternationalstudents.com. You can just say hi, you can introduce yourself. We'd love to get to know you. Or maybe you have an idea that you think international students would, would like. Um, and that idea could be an event, an activity, or maybe a video that you want created. So we're here to serve you and we would love to hear from you. Okay, so that's all for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it's help, it will help you prepare for winter and enjoy it more. And let us know how you, your efforts to um, prepare and enjoy winter. Talk to you later.